Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 97 of Podcast vs. Enemies, a Destiny massive breakdown show. The three of us are returning from the future. We have seen the final shape, and it is neither a sphere nor a pyramid. It is, in fact, a secret third option, a cube. That's right. We've been uh, in the Prophecy Dungeon because that just got a loot refresh. There has been a lot of things going on this past week. We've got another loot refresh in the playlists activities as well. Guardian Games got kicked off. New loot there, refresh loot as well, and a whole bunch of tweaks and changes to Destiny. So it's it's a good time to be playing, and we have been playing both separately and together. Uh, I'll start off with Court. What have you been up to this past week, buddy? Uh, lots of cube action um it has been a while since our last episode now that i think about it um because we were, we were going to do an episode a week before the new mid-season update but that didn't really make much sense we'd be talking about the weapons which we are talking about this this week but uh, as a kind of speculative uh episode but uh anyway we're here we've been farming some prophecy uh, Farmers of Prophecy with these lads. Still one of my favourite dungeons for many reasons. The aesthetics are just banger. And the Kelly Echo boss fight is still one of my uh, top tier boss fights out there. Uh, as for me, personally, a rocket launcher infographic has been refreshed. Um, so it'll be out now for my coffee members. But uh, 12 or 24 hours after this episode goes out, it'll be out for the general public. And I'll be obviously uh, announcing that over on my socials and the DMB Discord server. So keep up to date by following those. Um, yeah, little bits here and there. Mostly just uh, kind of... Um, gorging ourselves with this new mid-season update uh specifically prophecy but uh saint what have you been up to yeah you know prophecy farming doing some regular runs uh doing some runs with some friends that are jumping back into the game for a first time in a while after the season uh spent a couple weeks playing some hell divers that was definitely fun i uh, just went through my midterms uh a couple days ago I would say for, you know, C sharp and game design stuff. So I'm on spring break right now, which I haven't been on spring break in, in a, in a while. So it feels good. <laughs> um, also just hosted my first D and D session as a DM last night. And I was telling these guys beforehand that, you know, there's always this kind of like level of concern of our, are the players going to get it? Or are they going to kind of buy in? Or is this going to be like really lame? And within like 45 minutes, they had captured a goblin and somebody had strapped the goblin to their chest as a meat shield. And I was like, okay, no, this was, yeah, this was the right choice. These are the right friends to play with right here. So uh, <laughs> a lot of fun there. And yeah, we get, um, we get a few episodes, you know, kind of, looking through the next few weeks i i think we're we're planning on doing a few episodes in a row here now that we've gotten a nice you know good refresh uh infusion of content um and we'll, we'll get into that in just a second we're going to cover our next couple episodes but before we do that i'm going to give a shout out to our supporters of the show as always uh bay one bay bay and network Bayo Network, I, I think is how that's pronounced. Thank you for joining the ranks of the patrons. Also want to give a shout out to sponsors of the show, ASCII and Monk. I'm Kay Rose. And this moment, uh, as a reminder, you can send all kinds of feedback directly to us in our socials or via the Destiny Massive Breakdowns Discord server in the PVE chat channel. Uh, positive, critical, and constructive feedback helps the trajectory of the podcast, how we break down builds, activities, and much more want to send a special thanks to everyone that uh, just supports PVE, whether that is through downloading and listening each week, discussing it with us, engaging in the Discord server, or supporting us via Patreon. Speaking of, if you would like to support the show, you can check out DestinyMassiveBreakdowns.com and click on the link to Patreon. All right, Court, what are we talking about today? Yeah, we've got quite a selection for this week, so we'll be covering the sort of more recent pre updates 7.3.5 uh stuff so we had a couple of twids that we'll just knock out uh and we had a bungee interview so we've got some highlights with that um 
Merck was on the Firing Range podcast uh, a week or so ago. Uh, we'll be covering some 7.3.5 highlights, and of course, this episode we're going to talk about the Prophecy Dungeon refresh. Uh, we've got some kind of housekeeping, some podcast updates here. So Saint mentioned there just a second ago, uh, for the, the, the schedule for March, we're planning to do a weekly show, uh, so every week to the end of March, uh, maybe uh, into April as well, just looking at the schedule. We do have a few kind of weapon sets to break down. We've got uh, 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 Lake of Shadows GM to break down as well. Uh, and I think we've got another PVE University topic as well. So still plenty of things to discuss. Uh, in terms of um, community highlights, just a little kind of section I wanted to put in here. Uh, the Destiny Spreadsheets link tree has been updated with the following. Uh, we have Rye Tackle's Ability Penalty Spreadsheet, so that's how much abilities now provide since the changes uh, at the start of Season 23 uh, for those flat gain uh, abilities. Uh, so it, think of Demolitionists. We, we kind of discussed that a few episodes ago and where it used to give a flat bonus of uh, 10% or 11% for some weapons. It's now been changed dynamically, so a uh, Certain abilities might now be 5% or 6%. So you can see all those on that spreadsheet. Uh, we've, of course, got the Mercury's PvP Q&A on Fire Range Recap. I did a big breakdown uh, right up for that. Uh, so if you're... I definitely recommend listening to the show, but if you just want to see sort of highlights, if you want to sort of control F uh, and find anything that's uh, applicable to you, uh, we'll be touching on some PVE uh, stuff in a second here as well. Uh, and finally, Mossy's got a fantastic ammo and brick capacity breakdown uh, and an overview of the Season 23 ammo buffs. So all three of those will be linked at the top of the link tree as featured tabs uh, if you want to head over for that. In terms of... Twit, Bungie, all that kind of stuff. We have two twits we'll talk about. Uh, I'll cover uh, the first two here uh, before passing over to Imtis for the Merc on Fire Range. So uh, lots of PvP content. Uh, obviously, this is a PvE show, but uh, I think it would make more, you know, make sense for us to just kind of slightly cover uh, some of the updates. Uh, so uh, we have a increased to end of match rewards. Uh, we have high stat armor, artifact armor in the competitive cru uh, crucible playlist. I've seen a few rumblings of it's maybe not that uh, generous when it comes to high start artifice armor, just say not artifact. Uh, we have some more game modes coming out between now, uh, which are out now, and then some coming later uh, up to the final shape and then post final shape. And of course, in May, we have some new maps, Europa, Neomuna, and one on the terraformed pyramid ship. Of course, we'll be talking about the Prophecy Dungeon weapons this week. Uh, so that was the 22nd of February twit. 29th of February, Twit, we have a preview of the skimmers, which we're using right now. Uh, we have uh, uh, Garden Games weapons, We've got the new Hullabaloo, which is the arc heavy weapon wave frame grenade launcher. We've obviously got the return of Taraxippus and the title with some refreshed perk pools. We've got new memento and we'll obviously be covering all three of those weapons uh, either next week or the week after. Um, thoughts, lads? What's uh, let, let's, let's take skimmers. We've been Playing around with skimmers, uh, it's it's part of. Uh, so just to give a little context, the base white version of the skimmer is part of a kind of preview to the skimmer that you get through the Guardian Games uh, kind of quest line. It's very much at the start. If you complete the main quest line, you will unlock the exotic variant, uh, but you can also purchase the Galahorn skimmer um, over on Eververse. Uh, but uh, skimmers, the uh, they have certainly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, quite a surprise. Also, um, perhaps uh, kind of eliminated the need for uh, uh, for sparrows. <laughs> yeah, what if sparrows could fly? I think was yes. the starting point for the concept of a skimmer. And I never thought skimmer or <laughs> I never thought sparrows would be power corrupt. But I mean, this is <laughs> this is like comparing Galahorn to a legendary rocket launcher. There's just no contest. It, it is awesome fun and i have been reaching places within the prophecy dungeon that i never thought i could get to without <laughs> doing some weird tech or going out of bounds and stuff so uh yeah we we've been grinding weapons and we've also been grinding that dungeon uh literally <laughs> on the skimmer <laughs> i wonder if there's gonna be a change at some point with the whole like remounting your skimmer and just having essentially like 
infinite ability to just like fly through the air because it's just like so nuts right now and, and i love it and to your point of sparrows just being power crept it's also just like it looks so cool it's it's hard to imagine that even if it wasn't as effective, the thing could be significantly slower than a Sparrow. And I would probably still be just riding around on a skimmer everywhere just because it's so badass looking. Um, yeah, man, Marty McFly would be very proud. We did the, um, and I, the name always escapes me, but we did the Neomuna GM at the start of this week for the Wild Style Grenade Launcher. And you have to do that Sparrow Traversal section. It's no longer just the Sparrow Traversal section. But I did it on the skimmer because I had it equipped because I was doing Guardian games. And I didn't I didn't intentionally do this at the time. Um, but I don't know what it is about my Guardian's profile, but I felt like it was so much easier to navigate that section because I'm just slimmer. Um, like the, the mm. skimmer obviously isn't as wide as a sparrow. And even though I'm standing as opposed to sitting on the sparrow or on the skimmer, I still feel like I was able to at least like move around. Like it didn't feel as stressful this time around as it had when I've been navigating on the sparrow before. And I've been, I felt the same way actually when you were doing the ribbon road in prophecy, like it still feels pretty easy to use and even easier. I feel like in sections where you might normally use a sparrow, but yeah, I mean, I got nothing but positive things to say about the skimmer. My one complaint is not about the, sk the skimmer. It's about the, the quest line to get the permanently unlocked skimmer. I haven't been able to play like right at reset in it pretty much any day since the skimmer came out on Tuesday. And that can be an issue because of the way that the quest unlock thing works with the nightfall scoring, which is just kind of weird. Um, I think I know, probably tomorrow uh, I might be able to get on, you know, kind of right around reset and try to just go for an easy clear there. But it, it has this escalating difficulty because you have to get a, a score that, is a threshold that's basically set by people that are playing the nightfall. So unless you are emoting and finishing every champion and even going through all of that and getting really high scores, you could still not hit that threshold, which is kind of frustrating. Um, and I wish that it was just like get a score over 300 K or something like that, you know, just set a really high bar and then just have that be the bar instead of it being a uh, moving target like each day. And you have to make sure that you're doing it at the right time, um, which is just kind of strange, but I get the idea of wanting it to be a community competition. The way that that's played out is just not great practically, I don't think. I think as well as that, that's a very good point there, Saint, but the question is how do we get skimmers after Guardian Games, uh, which isn't, mm. uh, you know, where you don't need to buy one straight from Eververse. Um, I think it's safe to assume that we'll have more in the final shape, but, you know, that's still a while away. You know, when it, Guardian Games ends, it'll be kind of end of March, start of April. We still have a couple months after that before Final Shape. So are we maybe getting one during then? Can we get like the base version at some point? I'm 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 assuming Bungie will come out at some point, um, maybe mid Guardian Games or the end of Guardian Guardian Games, just to clarify, yes, skimmers will be available, uh, but I think it's just a question of uh when, not a question of if. Good point. Yeah. Because like they are very fun, and I certainly don't want people to miss out. Because um, they are, I think a lot of the content that we're we'll be talking about over the next couple of weeks it has kind of you know we're back to the kind of usual. It's re reignited the spark when it comes to playing Destiny, but the skimmer specifically is just wow. This this tech is just amazing. It is breaking a few things, as uh, Impetus was mentioning there. You know, you're hitting the ceiling cap in in a place like uh, the Prophecy Dungeon where you thought. Wow, this this is starting to kind of uh, it, it's it's entering like fourth wall breakage when it comes to uh, these these kind of uh, uh, kind of vehicles that are breaking uh, uh, the top of the ceilings or the bottom of uh, arenas. But uh, yeah, like I, I certainly don't want miss uh, I don't want people to miss out on on skimmers. Uh, so having one that's just freely available uh, rather than one that's attached to the Gal uh, Galahorn. Um, pack on Eververse. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we do need that clarified for sure. Yeah, it's Maybe, worth pointing uh, out that the common skimmer specifically says on the item it will go away at the end of Guardian games. So yeah. mm -hmm. do go get the exotic version. I know that, the, I mean, 
Bungie's going to change the quest line because right now it is quite difficult to do for the average Destiny player. So I imagine it will be dumbed down or, you know, slimmed down in some ways so that the majority of people that lock on for the final week of Guardian games can get that one uh, freely available skimmer that's not uh, doesn't cost twenty five dollars. So, yeah, um, I wouldn't panic just yet because we're in the first week of, of three, but. If you're trying to go grab it right now, obviously to go play with the exotic one, yeah, it's frustrating. I get that. Maybe, uh, maybe they'll bring him back like uh, into the light because it's supposed to be in April, right? Yeah, for sure. I'd be shocked if we didn't get another one. From what I've heard, because uh, so the quest quest step is, or sorry, the quest line is called jo- drop in, and you have to out of one out of three, you have to complete one. Uh, one of them is get twelve hundred, one thousand two hundred medallion score. I've played a fair amount, uh, and I've got halfway. I've got 667. From what I've heard is the diamond uh, medallion. If you put that in, it's it's worth around about 400, is what I've oh. heard. So you you can get it. Uh, if you do three medallions, one each week, because you can only get one per account per week, uh, you should... Sorry, you can get one and then an, ad- an additional one from watching the Twitch streams this week. I'm not yeah. sure if that's going to be extended next week as well, but there's one right now for doing a raid on all the same class. Uh, so you can get it by just doing that every week. But, you know, it's quite a, you know, getting all the same mm. class on one raid can be a bit of a faff, uh, even on like Fireteam Finder or LFG. The other one Saint was talking about there was earn a top 10% score in Nightfall Challenges. That's pretty much only doable when you're at reset uh, because that becomes exponentially harder to get the more people are doing Nightfall Challenges and doing the whole <laughs> dancing in front of a, a champion or a, a mini boss. Uh, to, to then finish and then you've got open your focus activity winner packages i'm not actually sure what that is but i have one out of three <laughs> um i i can remember opening something and then i opened something else i'm not sure what that actually means <laughs> i should have read this <laughs> yeah um, but, it's uh, it's it's a quest for sure yeah, uh, yeah. a quest in destiny <laughs> 2 the video game uh speaking of destiny 2 the video game mercules Longtime friend and former host of DMB was on firing range on February 28th, 2024 to talk about the PVP changes, the many, many PVP changes that were outlined in some previous articles. Um, that is now up on YouTube, that Bungie interview. It is firing range episode 64 under the DCP live uh, channel on YouTube. It's two hours, 31 minutes uh, of course, there is a text breakdown that Court did, a recap of everything that was published to Reddit. I'm sure if you are in any way involved in the Destiny 2 content creator sphere, you've probably seen some other breakdowns and stuff. But uh, we've got the very in-depth text one that Court wrote up and published on Reddit that is available in our link tree. But then the actual interview itself, if you want to go and listen to the man, uh, is on DCP's YouTube channel right now episode 64 so again we're not going to cover all the all the pvp stuff that's not the point of our show but we do want to talk about some things that would have some relevance to our side of the sandbox so uh, again these are highlights some of these changes are coming in final shape some other things were just straight up teases uh we have no idea what the timeline is for them so concerning the final shape um we were told that chain reaction the perk specifically on special weapons is being brought down in strength this is Mostly, if not all, entirely because of forbearance being cracked, juiced, absolutely strong. Um, The best ad clear weapon ever, potentially. Um, So Chain Reaction is getting nerfed, but uh, the reasoning here is so that they can start putting it on other kinds of special weapons without also running into the problem that it currently has right now on forbearance. We don't have any more details about what that nerf is going to look like, but it is coming in the final shape. Also coming in the final shape, this has been discussed uh, previously. We've discussed it last episode. Mercules did once again confirm that a lot of exotics will be getting some sort of revamp or change in the final shape, and they were specifically mentioning Dead Man's Tail. Uh, There were also some teases for Colony and Truth a few months ago as well. So that's what we have. Those are the changes for a confirmed timeline. Additionally, there was some teasing for a kinetic slot legendary stasis glaive, and they were also continuing to investigate, and I mean Bungie was continuing to investigate 
big team battle like experiences. Now this was in the context of PVP, but could also apply to PVE as well. Uh, Merc did highlight the 12 person raids bug from a few seasons ago. So Bungie is actively investigating it, but they wanna make sure that they can make it happen in a way that ends up being both fun and stable because the 12 person raids, and I think this is also applied to GMs too. I did participate in 12 person GM uh, we all popped our super at the same time, and then I lost all of my frames, uh, but it was very <laughs> bright, and I think we did complete it. I don't know. I th- I'm trying to remember. I think only half of us got loot, too, oh. as well, we, we, but, you know, it was a 12-minute, it, it was like a 12-minute GM, and it was Glassway, so, like, we weren't really that fussed about it, and, you yeah. know, it was a very fun clan time, but... Yes, uh, definitely understand them wanting to wait, make sure that it's stable so that when 12 golden guns pop at the same time, the game doesn't freak out as 8 billion damage is dealt to a target. So that is just a little bit of teasing. Again, we don't have any timelines for those last two things, the glaive and the kinetic slot and then the 12 person activities, but they are looking into it. Let's actually get into the highlights that have come to pass that have taken effect already, uh, specifically with rocket launchers and heavy grenade launchers. Corton, do you want to take away uh, our rocket launcher changes and what exactly has happened now to high impacts and precisions? Sure. So I, as, as I said at the start of the episode, I will have a Reddit breakdown for all of this, uh, plus lots more uh, kind of really summarizing stuff here. But uh, the, the sort of top level, the the the... the kind of um, stuff that applies to everything uh, I just wanted to note here. So high impacts have a new damage ratio. So that is 1 to 8.7. Um, all other rockets, not including exotics, because it gets complicated with them, uh, they still have that 1 to 3.5 ratio. Uh, so what what does that mean? Because we haven't really talked about that in this episode. I have uh, kind of discussed it and, and broke it down in previous rocket launcher breakdowns but the the ratio is uh how much a rocket launcher uh, splits its damage so take it so the one applies to impact damage so for every one impact damage you do 3.5 explosive or detonation damage and that's how a rocket launcher applies its damage it doesn't matter what your blast radius is. It's different to heavy heavy grenade launchers where if you tweak with the uh, blast radius, it, it dynamically affects how much impact and detonation damage you do. For rocket launchers, you could have a zero blast radius uh, high impact rocket and a 100 uh, blast radius high impact rocket launcher. They do the exact same damage. It's the, da- it's the ratio that's been changed for specifically high impacts. So what this basically means, one to eight point... Uh, 8.7 is you're doing less impact but a lot more detonation damage and the reason for that is as uh, the detail detailed on the preview the update preview is it's to make it a little bit more forgiving if you miss a target but it's a close miss so if a rocket explodes not on the target but close close by hits the ground hits the wall uh, it's still going to apply most of that explosive damage as opposed to say an adaptive or a precision rocket launcher where it's a much lesser detonation blast and it's uh, intrinsically because high impacts have a, a wider radius to uh, the detonation blast, uh, they do a lot more compared to uh, the other uh, rocket launchers. So that's all been confirmed. Uh, again, it goes a little bit more deeper in my breakdown for that. Uh, precisions are now a 0.95x damage profile previously it was a 0.90 so meaning uh, the uh, adaptives and aggressives now do around about 15.8 percent more damage previously this was 22 percent so it's just a flat buff to all precisions it's a five uh, five five percent uh, damage nullifier, if you want to call it uh, negative, compared to high impacts, and that fifteen point seven uh, fifteen point eight percent compared to adaptives and aggressive. So still a lower profile, but it's a lot more. I think more enticing, more inviting uh, to use rather than having something which was immediately twenty two percent less damage compared to the compared to its uh, competitors. Uh, additionally to high impacts and precisions, they got plus two across the board when it comes to total ammo capacity, and that is including exotics. We also know the exact frame for each exotic, which affects base damage and ammo capacity. Uh, so for exotics, 
uh, we have in the adaptive frame, it's the Eyes of Tomorrow. For the high impact frame, we've got Deathbringer, Truth, Dragon's Breath, and Galahorn. And for custom frames, kind of that don't really fit with the others, uh, we've got Wardcliff Coil and Two Tailed Fox. So the changes to both the damage ratio, which my post will go into a lot more detail, I won't go here, but uh, the plus two to total ammo capacity did apply to the exotics. Deathbringer and Truth at base, one reserve, two reserve, and three reserve. It was seven, eight, nine, nine. And now it's nine, ten, eleven, eleven. And Dragon's Breath and Galhorn uh, were seven, eight, nine, ten. And now they are nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So fantastic to see. I mean, I wasn't really anticipating or wanted a Galahorn reserves buff, but uh, at base level, Dragon's Breath and Galahorn will have nine shots, and just with one reserve mod, you can have ten. And uh, obviously, it's uh, the more ammo reserve, the more total ammo capacity you have, the, the higher uh, Purple Bricks yield, uh, uh, the, the ammo yields for you. Uh, you get a lot more bang for your buck when the total ammo capacity is higher. Uh, again, my uh, post will go into a lot more detail uh, when that gets published. Um, very interesting changes, uh, and I do want to thank Rock for some extensive testing when it came to identifying all the exotics. Uh, it's very good to know how the... Because uh, like before, I always thought the exotics were kind of a bit like Saurus, where the frames are, are, are kind of a little bit different to the legendary or the, the base frames. I was always under the impression that uh, each exotic ro rocket launcher was kind of custom tuned right down to the foundation. But uh, now we've got kind of confirmed uh, frame usage for, for each of them. Uh, and it's uh, it's weird to see Ice tomorrow as an adaptive and then everything else uh, is a high impact or their custom frame. Um, you lads got any thoughts here uh, in regards to rocket launchers? I mean, they just keep... Uh, they keep going up in terms of uh, utility, ammo, damage. It's great, great to see. Yeah, I mean, when you get a ammo capacity buff to the most dominant heavy weapons, um, Cenotaph Warlocks just get better and better too. Um, so, yeah, if you do not, if you are planning to do the final shape raid, whether that's in the competitive day one race, that forty-eight hour period, or even just afterwards run it normally, run it on Master when that difficulty comes out. Make sure you have a Cenotaph Warlock on your fire team. That is going to be huge for spawning in those heavy ammo bricks. Again, just just get one reserve mod there on the legs, right? Whether you're running Dragon's Breath or Galahorn, because there's going to be some great great cases for that, even if it's also just the legendaries. Getting, um, getting some extra ammo per those bricks is going to really, really help boost up your damage, give you that extra layer of forgiveness, extra shots as well. So, yeah, Warlocks are, uh, those support exotics keep coming in clutch, you know? I can't believe they buffed Dragon's Breath already from where it was. It was, like, such a good total damage output weapon. Um, we just threw a couple more rockets on top of that, just to make sure that it, it, there's no doubt about it that Dragon's Breath is a top-notch total damage output weapon. Dragon's Breath, so the way the damage ratio affects Dragon's Breath is so the, the, the canister that impacts was quite a small damage increase, uh, uh, a small damage instance anyway, but that's been decreased. But because the detonation blast affects the final explosion of Dragon's Breath, that went up because it's attached to the detonation uh, damage ratio change. It was the same for Truth. Truth doesn't perform uh, impact uh, because it's an air burst rocket. It, it explodes on close proximity. But the technically speaking, it has an impact ratio there. If, if it didn't have uh, horseshoes and, and grenades, it, it would have... Um, uh, it, it would have it would have been applied here, but the detonation is applied again. It's still truth. It's it needs a little bit more work, which we know is getting some sort of change in the future. But uh, it was very interesting to see these changes. I think the only one that didn't get any kind of flat change here was Deathbringer, and that's because of how the void orbs function. Uh, it doesn't have an impact value to change, uh, technically speaking. Uh, but everything else. Very interesting to see how it uh, kind of tweaks. Last note here before we can uh, pass over to heavy grenade launchers. Um, Imptus was mentioning there about, um, you know, uh, Cenotaph Warlocks. 
Uh, I wanted to throw in here just a, a big highlight, and it's kind of at the end of my post uh, when it goes up. Uh, when it comes to something like semiotition, which can get 17, which is the max ammo uh, total ammo capacity, with only one reserve in hands field prep plus bipods, if you pick up a regular brick, you'll get on average five ammo, sometimes six. If you pick up a, a two times ammo finder brick, you'll get three ammo. If you pick up a cenotaph brick, you get two. Normally, most rockets only get one, so that is quite a special upper tier case here. And if you're using Sept of Insight, which is the Aeon Gauntlets, you'll either get three or four ammo. So, like, we're talking huge amount of gains compared to uh, before. Just with having 17, with just one reserve mod, that's, like, easy to have. Because we, we always talk about, oh, you could theoretically get... 12 with, say, Dragon's Breath with three reserve mods, but that's not practical in a lot of uh, situations, whereas this is very easy just to get that 17. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, rocket launchers do be cooking. Yeah, that's and a good point. they continue to cook. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it's, like, easy to rally with several reserve mods on, but... 90% of the time, you're going to want to run at least two resist, you know, style, right? Yep. Um, but yeah, looking hot. You know, this is looking pretty hot. These grenade launchers, and they're trying, okay? Now, just despite everything that is going on with rocket launchers over here, heavy grenade launchers also got some pretty significant buffs, and they are, are trying their damnedest to, to hold on to a, a spot in the meta. Adaptive grenade launcher reserves were increased to anywhere between 23 and 28. Rapid fire grenade launcher reserves increased to anywhere between 30 and 35. So we're going to go over some examples here of old and new numbers for exotics. Um, so Anarchy before was uh, 16 at base and then 19 with three reserve mods. And now it is 23 at base and 28 with three reserve mods, which I want to say it's all time peak was like 32 or 33 somewhere around there. Um, when it was truly in its, in its reign of terror, it was in the low thirties. So the fact that you could you know, 23 at base, you could only get 20 up with it, 28 with uh, three reserves on anarchy for a quick rally. There is kind of insane. Um, I don't know, maybe Anarchy back in the menu. You're going to have to spend some more time there. Parasite was seven at base and nine at three reserves. It is now 13 at base and 17 at three reserves, which I don't know how useful that will be just because of the kind of the natural flow is to use Parasite pretty slowly, pretty intermittently. But hey, if nothing else, having 17 different worms to toss at your enemies is, is never a bad thing, you know? Um, Salvation script went up from a 16 base and 18 max to 24 base and 28 max. So huge jump uh, in the base there. Really nice to see. Um, and then we have the colony, which Court was making some use of in the in the cube room. <laughs> I recognize that sound anywhere. Um, the catalyst will, you know, basically max out the ammo capacity. So there's no sense in running a reserve mod. And, and same thing for the prospector. Um, Colony was a 18 rounds max, and now it is 28. The prospector was 23, and it's now 35. So huge jump up here for a lot of these weapons. Um, yeah, Anarchy definitely jumps out. I don't know. I'm not really sure about Prospector. Um, the way that Prospector has its like burn damage over time is really strange. I'll have to go check the uh, you know the damage generator. But huge thanks to Rock DC and Mossy for getting all these details together on the inventory and stuff like that. They have some great write ups on this information that uh, will be linked in the show description in that Destiny Science link tree that Court had mentioned earlier on in the show. Uh, Laz, any final comments about? Rocket launchers and GLs before we move on to prophecy and some weapons. So uh, just for clarification for the listeners, heavy grenade launchers, we are looking at kind of a total damage situation, right? To put that in context with rocket launchers, if we're looking at these changes in regards to kind of where they sit with these buffs and rocket launchers are still burst, is that, do I have that correct? I got to go take a look at my 
<laughs> my heavy grenade launcher so, rolls here to see. So rocket launchers kind of they start overlapping the moment you start adding like more um, kind of total ammo capacity and uh, kind of perks that really help alleviate reloads or eliminates reloads in the first place. They mm -hmm. start encroaching on H HGLs kind of territory. I mean HGLs. I like I'm really wel welcoming to these. Uh, ammo capacity buffs. I think we're in a really good spot for some of these. We haven't listed any legendaries, but uh, uh, Mossy has all of that over on his uh, ammo capacity spreadsheet, which we've, we've already talked about. The link is in the Destiny Science spread uh, link tree. Um, I, th I, I still think HGLs need a little bit, a little bit of a, an up when it comes to. Maybe not damage, but like we're in a really good place in terms of ammo capacity. I don't think it needs any more. Like Parasite getting effectively double across the board from 17 to 13 or 9 to, to 17. Um, I like think Parasite doesn't, it didn't need that. Parasite is its <laughs> own thing. Um, but uh, Prospector now having 35, it's like, okay, we're great, we're good for ammo and we're good for picking up ammo to, to kind of keep that up, but where's the use for these weapons so it links back to the whole kind of point of rocket launcher still encroaching on total damage territory the moment you start really increasing and ramping up how much rockets you have in your backpack or how much uh, rockets that you can uh, feasibly have and something like uh semi mutation with 17 i mean that's crazy to think when mm -hmm. you know that's just under um under uh, half of prospector's maximum amount um also prospector can put more damage down uh down range in a in a shorter time time span than say semiotician you do need to have a lot more kind of time to to put those 17 rockets down range but uh yeah it, it's just curious where where we're kind of heading in terms of rocket launchers versus hdls um i think rockets i i I think they are going to get some sort of nerf down the line. I think it's we're getting to that point where they're they're covering a lot of territory across many uh, uh, where many other uh, weapons used to cover. Uh, uh, linear fusion rifles are still useful in some places, but it's heavy grenade launchers. Where 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 do we think HCLs should kind of? position themselves is my big kind of rhetorical question you guys don't mm. need to answer that if you want to answer it go ahead but uh, it's just a big question mark for me like don't get me wrong i love seeing buffs to both of these rocket launchers getting total ammo capacity buff great to see especially to differentiate high high impacts and precisions against their uh, higher damage cousins which are adaptives and aggressives so adaptives and aggressives haven't received any buff this season um or uh, this update uh, they haven't received any damage profile change or the damage ratio or the total ammo capacity. It was all just high impacts and precisions. They needed it. It's just what do HGLs need at this point to really kind of break past this overlap that rocket launchers have. Yeah, also interesting to see Baton's switch get nerfed 5%, with that being kind of like the biggest draw in Cataphract, but the, the, the biggest legendary potential yeah. dealer output uh, there for you know legendary hgl and go, envious assassin too yep that's true envious got down to it was 150 percent max now it's 100 percent max right i believe so 100 percent of max yeah yeah um, I took... all right, sorry go ahead Saint. well i was just gonna say i need to go double check generator again because i'm interested how the increase in reserves but the decrease in envious and bait and switch like how hard did that hit cataphract as far as like its DPS output goes, now that we, you know, now that we kind of talking through these numbers and stuff like that, that's definitely where my mind goes as the the biggest contender and the most potential. Um, I think it got a, I wouldn't say a massive knockdown. I think that's being a little bit hyperbolic, but uh, it got it got tuned down because also we had the spike grenades. Uh, overhaul. I don't necessarily want to call it a nerf. It was a nerf to spike grenades, but it was a buff to everything else that didn't have spike grenades. So it was this kind of balance between the two. But you, your your role was basically spike grenades, uh, envious assassin, and bait and switch on cataphract. But that role is now down 
it's a net nerf downwards uh, as opposed to something similar that's maybe got a different damage perk but yeah i think that point of like, we need to see the the the, the damage uh, kind of comparison between old um cataphract with those perks and then something brand new uh post update to see where the positioning is yeah and, and then you get the you get the whole question of crafted versus non-crafted mm. right enhanced perks like i was going through my dim right now looking at what what do i have that has field prep on it or um envious or reconstruction um yeah it, there are just a lot of really solid rocket launchers out there and I do not feel like that is also true of grenade launchers. Um, I mean, yes, we do have Cataphract. That's in trials. Um, you got Wendigo, which is technically acquirable from Zavala. It's expensive. I think it's five Vanguard Ingrams for a focus of the non-adept version. Uh, the best crafted one we have is Regnant from the start of this year. Um, go grab it before the final shape drops because I don't know how you'll be able to get Regnant after the final shape launches. But that doesn't even have BNS. That has explosive light and then auto-loading holster. Still perfectly fine roll. Um, and then you've just got some scattered rapid-fire ones. I mean, Caraxus from Ron has an adept version that can get... Um, well, it's got great ammo perks, but your best damage output would be full court if you can get that set up or paracausal affinity. But you could enhance field prep, you can enhance envious assassin, reconstruction. Um, you've got a cosmic from Festival of the Lost. If you picked one of those up, great. Uh, I've got a spike grenades, field prep, explosive light roll. Uh, it, it's just, I think they've been building up rocket launchers for so long that. At this point in time, I think somebody at least who even plays Destiny casually has got a good role. Yeah. If you've been buying the dungeon pack, you've been playing the raids, then you're going to have Apex Predator or shots at Apex Predator. You're going to have a shot at Cold Comfort, getting one of those solid roles. Even if you just started playing this season, I mean, Crux Termination is top three anyways. You know, go get yourself a Reconstruction Explosive Light roll, a Clown Explosive Light, what have you. Um Heck, if you're doing the Mara's Wishes, you could go and unlock Apex without even setting foot in Last Wish. So mm. <laughs> that's the problem. Like, even if we do shift over to that heavy grenade launcher meta, Bungie still needs to do a lot to set up the average player with an avenue for a truly end game heavy grenade launcher. And I don't see that right now outside of Cataphract and Trials. Trials got overhauled in a pretty big way, but the average player going and get an adept role still going to be really hard compared to going and just getting uh apex predator without even going into the raid that apex drops from or getting a world drop crux termination so i don't i'm kind of confused by you know where the meta is going to end up i'm happy for the changes but like for the average player i still think i'm going to push you towards um rocket launchers or mm -hmm. just say you're on parasite duty <laughs> you know <laughs> if you if you can't get an end game heavy grenade launcher we're going to give you the exotic right but even then, on the rocket launcher side, you got Gallahorn, you got Dragon's Breath. Like, you don't even need to get the sweet uh, legendary one. There's plenty of in-game options there as well. So, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know what we're going to be bringing in for those damage scenarios uh, in the final shape, whether that's on a raid or the legendary campaign or some in-game activity that might exist within the Traveler. I who knows, right? But the way that it's set up in terms of acquisition paths, it feels like rocket launchers should still be on top, given how many in-game options there are currently available that are still going to be pretty solid based on how their damage and magazine perks are set up so uh, before we move on here i did ask rock a couple of weeks yeah this was a couple of weeks ago it was prior to the um uh, the various twids that we got a preview to so obviously i couldn't like tell him why i'm asking him this but uh, I, I asked rock um who is one of the uh, kind of corners of the damage generator spreadsheet which we've been talking about link in the, the destiny spreadsheet i asked him what are your kind of hopefuls for a potential heavy gl buff like we, we did discuss that with him on his episode a few months ago um we we knew at that time that heavy gls were going to get the buff uh, and we've seen it now with the various kind of buffs to uh total ammo capacity and nerf to spike grenades but my overarching question to him was what what do you think should be um what should they focus on heavy grenade launchers just to make them more competitive and 
his answer was it hasn't really changed since the last time. It was, you know, thinking that the reserves buff is just going to make them too similar to Rockets, uh, but by, without needing Gallahorn on the team. Uh, he said would rather find uh, a way to give them a separate identity, possibly as uh, the more ammo efficient version of things like GMs, uh, but that's really heavily dependent on them changing the heavy ammo economy in the first place. And then when we see we see the the total ammo capacity buff with rocket launchers now with high impacts and precisions, they've got that buff as well. So like the scale hasn't shifted; they've both went up at the same time. Um, so it's just like the case you can't make back the rockets you spend on champions with Seno and Aeons. Uh, and being good at ad clear is not strong enough I- identity in the sandbox, and that includes wheel pack rounds. So, like, heavy uh, rocket launchers just have that intrinsic bonus across the board because you've got a support weapon like Gallahorn, you've got mm-hmm. intrinsic buffs to total ammo capacity. It's just a lot of things have happened simultaneously with the heavy grenade launchers, which is great to see, but it still hasn't shifted the uh, the perspective, the, the vibe for heavy grenade launchers compared to rocket launchers. That's their closest competitor uh, compared to other rocket, uh, and comp- compared to other weapon types. Uh, so he's still not, to, again, at the time, I, I, I think I'll, I'll let Rock talk about this himself uh, if he ever wants to come back on the show or post it on Destiny uh, Massive Breakdowns in the PV chat if he wants to discuss that himself. But uh, at the time, he's still not really convinced about HGLs uh, compared to rocket launchers. Uh, and I would, like, I would always, like, uh, like, whenever we talk about DPS... It's kind of in the perspective of a very high level, uh, but when it comes to DPS in the kind of nitty gritty stuff, stuff I would always uh, uh, let Rock speak on behalf of that because uh, he's the expert. He's the uh, the, the guy who t- talks about all the, the the sort of damage generation and the comparisons between each rocket uh, or uh, each heavy uh, weapon type, whether it's a LFR, a rocket launcher, a HGL, a sword. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not envious of uh, trying to balance heavy weapons in this game. I'll tell you what, that's for sure. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right, let's uh, let's do that weapon breakdown that uh, we said we would do in the title of the episode, shall we? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so Prophecy Dungeon, free to play. Been around for a few years now. The loot pool has been updated. Some weapons were removed. Some weapons were added. Some loot pools got refreshed. Some elements got changed. A lot of stuff happening here. So here's the updated drops from the three encounters of Prophecy. Dropping from the first encounter, that's the Phalanx Echo, we have Relentless and Prosecutor. The middle encounter, the Cube, has a Sudden Death and Adjudicator. And the final boss, and specifically these weapons drop from the Emissary Chest to the very, very end of the dungeon, uh, that is Judgment and Darkest Before. The weapons that have been removed from Prophecy Dungeon. The Last Breath, which is the kinetic adaptive auto rifle, the Long Walk, which is the solar aggressive sniper rifle, and a Swift Verdict, which is the void precision sidearm. The six aforementioned weapons have an origin trait. Pretty interesting one. This is called Crossing Over. Description reads, increased range and handling for the top half of the magazine, while rounds from the bottom half of the magazine deal increased damage. On the technical side, that means that the top 50% of the magazine grants up to plus 10 range and handling, the closer you are to the max magazine. And the bottom 50% of the mag grants around about 3% increased damage, the closer you get to zero in the mag. Pretty solid origin trait. Um, Again, these are Trials of the Nine Weapons that have been brought back, updated perk pools with the origin trait as well, so it is nice. Um, unfortunately, this is an origin trait that does show up in your perk slot, so it does does take up one of those very precious um, rows that uh, all of your buffs and debuffs will appear on, um, and it starts off... I can't remember the order it goes in, actually. Does it start with light and then go to dark, or is it dark and then light? Uh... I think it starts light and then dark, right? Yeah, with dark being the damage buff. I'm yeah, sure. I think yeah. that's right. So it just shows up. If you have one of these weapons on with the origin trait, you'll see a little buff that says light, and that is the origin trait telling you that you have the range and handling buff. 
And then once you get past 50% of the magazine, that light gets replaced with dark. And that's when you know that yep. you have the damage buff that will slowly increase up to 3% as you get closer to the bottom of the magazine. A very passive origin trait, much like Ovalon Fluid Dynamics, which is very similar vibe, but it's only the top 50% where you get 20 uh, stability and 30 reload. So just something in the background that's always working for you. Uh, great yes. origin trait. Definitely an in-game origin trait on some very um, interesting weapons. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit more. Uh, Saint, you want to take our first weapon? Yeah. First up, we have got the Adjudicator. This is a kinetic precision SMG, 600 RPM. And the frame bonus is going to be that minus 20% to horizontal recoil. So it says that the recoil should be more up and down. Um, and, and one of the stats I'll just jump in right off the bat here is the recoil direction of 93 I think that that's kind of deceiving. And when you actually watch the intrinsic recoil pattern in this weapon, it, it just looks like an S. It kind of goes up and goes right back and forth as you hold down the trigger. So I definitely think that that is something that you're going to want to consider uh, whenever we start really digging in on what we're going to use for this weapon here. As far as, you know, a few other stats we want to compare to some recent competitors, you know, let's look at Unending Tempest, right? This is that Stasis uh, SMG, you know, and then we also have um, Synchronic Roulette, a, a Strand Precision SMG from the Crucible and the Neomuna, respectively. So range is 56 on Adjudicator, which is the highest. Uh, that's going to be 3 over Unending Tempest. Stability is... 40, which is right in the middle. Handling is 21, which is the lowest, which is two points under Unending Tempest. And then the reload is 16, which is three points under its competitors here. So honestly, overall, pretty good stats. But if you are going to want to be using this in the Crucible and you're going to be looking towards trying to hit some crits, I would definitely try to recommend... Um, you know, getting that recoil direction up with maybe a chambered compensator all the way to 100, and then also trying to pump that stability up to just make that a little bit easier as the increase in stability will also impact that recoil direction and that recoil pattern severity ever since we had that intrinsic recoil change. Um, other than that, on barrels and mags, I would say if if I'm looking for a more general role, uh, I'm probably going to go with small bore on my barrel and then depending on what the role is i think that alloy mag has a pretty good argument to be made with a reload with a reload scaler um reload speed is going to be really important on this thing because you could potentially be absolutely dumping your magazine and having that scaler on a weapon that doesn't have a great reload would be really nice especially considering there are a few main traits here that could be upping your reload speed a little bit um if you're not going with that then i would say probably uh, attack mag flare madwell not super interested in accurized rounds personally um yeah i I'm definitely going to be investing in in alloy mag for just dumping out some bullets and, and trying to reload as quickly as possible um speaking of how you're going to be dumping those bullets uh let's take a look at some column three and four main traits here in column three we have got perpetual motion Feeding Frenzy, Subsistence, Threat Detector, Range Finder, and Dynamic Sway Reduction. And then in column four, we have got Rampage, Onslaught, Target Lock, Kinetic Tremors, Frenzy, and Fragile Focus. So no shortage of really strong damage options here, including Onslaught showing up for the very first time on an SMG, uh, interestingly alongside uh, Rampage, its, it's previously necessary counterpart. Um, Kinetic Tremors is also relatively rare on SMGs. I believe this is only the second SMG that we have seen with Kinetic Tremors. And as a reminder, you are going to need to land 14 bullets to trigger Kinetic Tremors. So it's pretty much uh, almost half of your magazine with a base magazine, yeah, I believe, of 27 bullets. So um, Connect Trimmer's pretty solid, but keep in mind that you're going to need to land almost half of that magazine to get that to proc. Um, court, Impetus, I mean, Onslaught on an SMG, is that the way? What are you pairing it with, or is there another damage trait in that column that's a little more appealing to you guys? What are you thinking? 
Well, I've seen a few clips of uh, Feeding Frenzy, and I'm assuming they also had Alloy Magazine and Onslaught, and it was uh, I Am Speed, the the, the SMG. Um, <laughs> very interesting to watch, but uh, I think this has got, for PvE and for PvP, but f- for this show, it's got some really great great perks across the board um like feeding frenzy is just great for having if you're as long as you're being aggressive with your uh, with your killing you just get passive reload plus a reload scaler on top of that perpetual motion is just something that works passively in the background if you're close by which you will be with adjudicator uh to get that um uh, plus 20 to stability handling and reloads uh, subsistence if you prefer that just getting kind of uh, passive ammo regeneration uh, so for SMGs uh, a, a kill will refill 17% of the magazine so it's a, it's a small portion I think it's better on larger uh, kind of magazine weapons like LMGs but uh, it's still a very passive and then threat detector as well uh, another passive plus 40 to stability, stability uh, plus uh, 100 to handling at times 2, plus 55 reload, and another handling dur- duration multiplier there as well. Frenzy for that plus 100 to handling and reload. I did get a roll with extended mag, which brings my reload speed down to zero, which is Ooh. what Saint was talking about. Yeah, but it did get Frenzy. Uh, so as long as I I have it sort of uh, in the background, I don't use it, or at least I use it before I have to reload, get frenzy propped and then it's instantly 100 reload speeds uh, plus your um uh, plus your 15 uh, damage increase and handling uh, on top of that kinetic tremor is not too sure um i'm not i don't know i'm not i'm still not convinced at least on an smg i was just looking at the the other uh, weapons that roll it so the showrunner was the first smg to get it and then this season we've got adjudicator and multimac uh, they are both uh, the Kinetic Tremors SMGs. Rampage, very classic perk to see once more. And I'm not too sure about target lock now with the, at least for PvP, that's been knocked back a little bit. But uh, for me, I think there's some really get great choices. Um, feeding Frenzy or per- Perp Motion or Threat Detector and then either friend, uh, Frenzy or Onslaught, uh, just for some really great uh, uh, damage perk for uh, Frenzy or Onslaught with the um, faster firing rate and the reload speeds. Uh, Impetus, what are, you, what's, what are you kind of looking at for Adjudicator? Yeah, I would say definitely don't go Kinetic Trimmers. Um, that perk activates off a hit requirement, so you want to prioritize weapons with a faster firing speed to get to that bullet threshold to proc it. So um, both multi mock and the Showrunner are lightweights. They fire at 900 RPM, which is higher than Adjudicator as a precision, so they will get to Kinetic Trimmers faster. Um also, by nature of being a lightweight frame, those two also have larger magazines of 36 and 35, respectively. So that 14 bullet mm-hmm. activation is a little bit more forgiving on that frame. Plus, um, yeah, they fire faster. So if you are interested in kinetic trimmers on an SMG, I think Showrunner would be the best option there. You could also take advantage of Overflow. Uh, Multimock isn't a bad option because that will have the field tested origin trait, but we'll cover that later on. So, yeah, Adjudicator, in my opinion, is the worst SMG for kinetic trimmers. If that mm-hmm. is what you want to go for, I definitely think Onslaught would be a much more preferable option as it's the only SMG with Onslaught and Threat Detector. I mean, you can't go wrong on an SMG with Threat Detector. That thing will be active it should be active at least all the time if you are using your smg correctly so that is my chase that's what i'm going for onslaught also does give you that reload speed buff so yeah it's it's great i never thought i'd see the day when rampage would be the worst perk in column four <laughs> kind of want to send it i wish i could go take a snapshot of this loot pool and send it to somebody playing forsaken for the first time back when that first <laughs> dropped and goes you'll never guess what's the work, worst perk in column four on this gun <laughs> Yeah, I I feel like I've seen a bunch of people saying Feeding Frenzy Onslaught, and I I can get the idea that you want a little bit of a scaler. I think that Feeding Frenzy, yeah, it starts off really low. It only gives like a 3% scaler, but then it goes to 10%, and at max sacks, it's a 20% scaler or a 0.8 um, you know, kind of multiplier on your reload speed there. So I can definitely get the desire for that, but I'm totally going 
threat detector because I want that extra stability. You know, threat detector, um, 40 stability, right? And if I'm using a weapon that is firing, you know, 37% increase in, in the fire rate here, uh, or 37% decrease in the firing delay is technically what's going on there. But my RPM is through the roof. I'm going to need that extra 40 stability to, to keep this thing on target, right? We were going back to the fact that it's recoil pattern at, you know, intrinsic recoil pattern is not great, despite the fact that it has like really high recoil direction. Don't really believe that. Um, really think that the benefits from threat detector there would be awesome. Plus, um, yeah, let's see if you're, if you're getting threat detector, uh, times two, you're going to be getting 60 reload plus I believe, yeah, onslaught's going to go all the way up to 35. It's going to go 15, 25, 35 for a reload speed bonus. So you're getting up to hundred anyways, either way, using threat detector times two and with onslaught, um, yeah, you throw in an alloy mag, in there and you are just going to be absolutely shredding through some enemies plus an extra few percent damage on the bottom half of the mag just just because just for fun you know um my thought initially went to trying to use something like subsistence and frenzy and or subsistence and onslaught and trying to keep my you know take advantage of that damage buff that i'm getting from the bottom half of the mag a little bit more but given that it's only you know zero to three percent uh, yeah, I don't think that's worth it. I think just shred them with onslaught. Use threat detector for some stability, plus that reload, and like an alloy mag to just get the reload speed through the roof. Um, of course, that's what I would like to have. Um, what I actually have is 17 rolls with Focus Fury instead. Um, and then when we, we're going to be car farming the cube uh, later this evening, probably because the vault's not quite looking how we want it yet. Mm -mm. I was curious mm -mm. at the like the fastest reload time you could have with this. So I, I put on it Alloy Magazine, Feeding Frenzy times five, and uh, Onslaught just for the decreased firing delay, but also that increases reload as well. I also added Flow State, which is the Arc Hunter aspect, <laughs> which also uh, increases the, or sorry, decreases the reload duration. It's a, a multiplier on top of that. And it goes from... It's like 1.5 seconds. Sorry, it's at base with no perks added or anything like that. It's at base 2.34 seconds. And then with Feeding Frenzy added, it goes to 0.85 seconds. And then with uh, Alloy Magazine, it brings it down to 0.72 seconds, which is a 69% <laughs> um, uh, decrease to your reload time, which is crazy. Uh, so Arc Hunters, you if you want to go for that, You'll be cooking with this. You are reloading faster than like most weapons can optimally kill in the Crucible. <laughs> than, than most weapons, uh, the, the, the aim down sight time of most weapons. <laughs> I'm still like taking the magazine clip off of my LMG and this thing's already reloaded, you know. You've basically in your backpack, you've just got the exact same uh, rolls. Uh, of like a hundred adjudicator just duplicated and that's what you do you just pull out <laughs> one you throw throw the empty one you've oh, got a new yeah. adjudicator <laughs> uh, mr torg style yeah, I was gonna say a little borderlands action here yeah. that's good <laughs> all right uh court you want to you want to take our next weapon yes we have a prosecutor which is the arc precision auto rifle uh, that's 450 RPM. Again, it's another precision weapon, so intrinsic passive of negative 20% recoil yaw, otherwise known as just reduced horizontal recoil. So stat versus its peers here. We're comparing it with Breakneck, which is the kinetic gambit weapon from this season. And we also have Amit, which is the solar uh, uh, AR from the Enclave questline, so you can craft that. Range of 60, so it's the lowest by four under Breakneck, Stability of 42, which is the lowest by three under Breaknet and Amit. Handling of 46, which is tied for highest by nine with Amit. Reload of 45, which is lowest by one under Breakneck. And the recoil direction of 69, which is lowest by 11 under Breakneck. Other kind of notable stats that we wanted to share here. Uh, it's a zoom of 16, which is shared with Breakneck 
Amit has 15 Zoom. Uh, Zoom doesn't really have, uh, you know, Zoom used to do a lot of funky stuff in the back end. It still has some kind of uh, added bonus now, but it's not as uh, as prominent, especially for PvP these days. And weirdly, it's got an AE of 10 with Breaknet, whereas Amit has 20. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> very, uh, very, <laughs> quite a disparity between the two there. So, as ever with the, all these weapons being kind of year one oriented, it does kind of hold up quite surprisingly well, statistically speaking. Um, but yeah, let's look at some of these perks for column one and two barrels. Uh, for me, I think I'm still going to be kind of uh, focusing on range. Uh, with me being a PC player, I've got mouse and keyboard. Don't necessarily need to kind of focus on stability. Uh, before I kind of talk about talk about the perks here, Saint, I know you were testing earlier on the kind of recall direction of some of these weapons because the 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 RD can be a little bit of a, a kind of uh, it's not as uh, accurate now compared to uh, pre uh, deterministic mm-hmm. recoil days. What was your vibes when you're firing this at a wall? I feel bear in mind this is this way is on controller more, uh, stable than adjudicator this right. and this is the kind of the weird thing about the weapons this thing's base recoil direction is 69 adjudicators is 93 and yep. i will say that both the roles that i have kept for this weapon have keep away on them so there is mm-hmm. I, I think that maybe that could be slightly influencing the accuracy cone growth but i'm not sure how much that's actually going to influence the recoil pattern um but yeah generally speaking at i think think it was at base yeah 69 and then i had also tried one with chamber compensator at 79 and that they both felt really easy to control really not bad recoil patterns at all uh, compared to some of the other stuff that we've seen in this set or, and we'll, we'll talk about later uh and that was on controller right yeah that's correct that's correct right so now kind of knowing that knowledge i think recoil direction is not really something to kind of focus on if you get something like that then you get some amount of benefit but uh, looking on say d2 foundry and you see your 69 it kind of looks like it's firing to the upper left uh in practice at least on keyboard and mouse you're not really going to kind of notice that so Mm -hmm. for me as ever it's going to be kind of range uh with these kind of uh, ars you want to go for something that's a little bit more rangy when it's already intrinsically got uh, kind of predictable vertical uh, 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 recoil uh, path. Uh, in terms of the second, so if for me, looking at hammer forge rifling, or if you maybe want to spec into a little bit of stability, small bore, uh, but then you've got um, things like extended barrel, if you can get that, it is a minus 10 to handling, but you do get that plus 10 to, to range, plus recoil. Um, it's really for PVE, it's not it's not too terribly important to focus on anything here. Um, for the magazine, though, I'm still kind of a strong believer of armor piercing or high cal rounds, uh, especially for high cal high high cal because you can get that flinch on uh, kind of smaller tier enemies in PVE. You can get that kind of stagger effect, not as prevalent on higher tier combatants. Um, say like mini bosses or anything like that but for elites and uh, and rank and file high cal can be a really kind of fun pick here. Ricochet does give you that plus 5 range and plus 10 stability uh, and then armor piercing does does give you that plus 5% increased damage to PvE combatants which does include um, uh, kind of any generic shield, champion shields as well. It's just a free passive buff. Uh, whenever we have, uh, say, auto rifle as the anti barrier option, or if you're just running radiant um, for this arc weapon here. Um, do you guys got any have you know any barrels or magazines that you might be kind of focused on that I may have missed? No, I think you got it. The one that I kept has. Um fluted or hammer forge mm. i ended up going fluted but then it also had armor piercing rounds which i do think is probably the best option um and that's what i have on on selected on my roll yeah i'm going high cal for exactly like you're talking about court for the perks we have discord dragonfly got shot uh keep away rewind and zen moment in column three and then column four cascade frenzy golden tricorn tap the trigger target lock and volt shot so for me i think sync kind of already gave it away i kind of want to go for keep away um i'm not terribly convinced with a 
uh, primary ammo weapon rewind rounds. Not really something that I'm kind of interested in. Discord, an interesting pick, but not for primaries, is kind of a, again, a personal preference here. I think that's still more of a um, either ha- higher magazine some, uh, or a kind of special weapon uh, focus, because you do get that kind of refund uh, one ammo with special weapons. Um, again, personal preference, these guys might uh, uh, step up and say something about Discord with this weapon. Um, if you want the fun roll, probably something like Dragonfly plus Volt Shots. Um, as ever, Golden Tricorn is here. Uh, free 50%. Arc's very easy to get your uh, your times 2 stack with any sort of grenade or melee ability. Um, Frenzy, Frenzy is here as well. Again, another passive 50%. 100 handling, 100 reload speed. It brings up to 100 for both of those anyway. Um... But uh, yeah, in terms of me, I don't. I think I've had maybe one of these drop. I need to get some more um, prospectors. Sorry, prosecutors to drop for me. But uh, f- I think uh, maybe the fun roll of Dragonfly and Volt Shot. I'd love to see that uh, pick up. Uh, Volt Shot's not as it's not as powerful as since they they've normalized all the dra- uh, the uh, Volt Shot. Uh, multipliers down to the same same level uh, before that was a change it was based on the uh, the uh, the weapon multiplier the, the base mm. combatant multiplier uh, and that's no longer the case when it comes to vote shot but vote shot's still a fantastic weapon you've got overload potential there being able to just uh, spread that uh, area of effect with vote shot especially in large groups of ads and then dragonfly on top of that just a great kind of ad clearing weapon uh, for the prosecutor uh saying what weapon perks are you thinking here that i've maybe missed out yeah i get this is like the one weapon i got really lucky on adjudicator has been brutal but when it comes to the prosecutor i think playing my second or third drop was keep away and volt shot so you got it immediately i was so yeah. mad <laughs> bruh <laughs> it feels pretty good can't lie about that one. Uh, I'm sure the, it does. <laughs> the synergy so happy for you. of keep away and involve shot with the reload that you just get in that 30 reload speed. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. Yeah, it just really feels nice. I think Dragonfly and Frenzy would also be nice. You know, Frenzy is kind of like giving you all the stat bumps and then Dragonfly is just like throwing in some extra explosions in there for fun. Um, but yeah, keep away Volt shot just has such natural synergy and... This is only the second auto rifle that's had Volt Shot, right? I want to say... Yes. Uh, yes. Dark Decider was our other one. And it just didn't really have any strong pairing perks with it versus here, uh, you know, you've got like the perfect opportunity to pair something great with this. And everybody's hooked on their Volt Shot SMGs, but you got to keep in mind that with just a little bit of extra into the range stat here, you know, you're, you're looking at 34, 35 meters range with this thing versus an SMG. Um, that's going to be, I don't know, not maybe not half that. Um, but 20 meters, you know, something like that. So maybe 15 meters less. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a decent argument there for pushing that range out on which you could, you could, potentially proc something like volt shot um which is yeah it's just such a good trait ad clear champ stunning whole nine yards i'm gonna push back on rewind rounds only because it allows you to keep up the dark side of the origin trait up Mm. longer Mm. um the role that i have to drop that I, i wasn't thrilled about initially but i think i am actually gonna come back around to it all the way is rewind golden tricorn um Again, for in-game, you really do need a massive damage buff on primary weapons to make them viable. And again, Arc is really easy to get mm-hmm. that times two golden tricorn. To have an origin trait that just gives me a little teeny bit extra damage on top for, for firing the weapon is nice. And Rewind Rounds allows me to keep up that bottom half of the origin trait procced just a little bit longer because of the refill effect of Rewind. It's... of the number of hits landed, rounded up into the magazine from reserves. So uh, that is that is going to get me back into dark uh, and keep me at dark right up until I have to manually reload it. So I'm I'm pretty happy uh, with that combo. Yeah, I still would want keep away Volcha, I think. But, you know, if you get rewind and golden tricorn, 
that's going to be a very strong primary weapon all the way up into Grandmaster tier difficulty. Um, and again, being a precision frame, it really is easy to fire. It's got a great scope. The sight is a little circle with a dot in the middle. It's so easy to line up when you're hitting targets. Really, really love shooting the thing. Um, yeah, I don't have enough good things to say about Prosecutor. It's, it's just incredible. Um, and it's got some really strong perks. But yeah, I do think Rewind has a place. I would still give it to Keep Away as kind of the top option, Calm 3, but... Column four, you want to go Golden Tricorn for, you know, that sweet, sweet 50% damage buff or Volt Shot for the, the Verb applicators. You've got great arguments either way. Um, you know, take your pick. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, thing, uh, we'll go ahead, Court. I, I was just going to mention Dragonfly. So Dragonfly inherits the weapons combatant damage scaling. Uh, and I believe it also inherits the damage buff, so something like Frenzy and Golden Tricorn. But the multiplier is based on the, the type of combatant that you uh, kill. And for auto rifles, it's actually pretty low, so Dragonfly might not be the best option here, as opposed to a very a completely different weapon type. We've got Nation of Beasts from Last Wish, which also has Volt Shot and Dragonfly. Dragonfly in the third, and Volt Shot in the fourth. And hand cannons are, they already have a very decent um, combat multiplier. It's almost double compared to all rifles. Uh, and it's, I suppose it's easier. Uh, to kind of click those heads as well with hand cannons it's more naturally uh, intrinsic to to the play style of hand cannons in pve uh, so yeah dragonfly might not be the best place uh to kind of have this applicable uh but yeah now keep away and vote shot uh saint go ahead well i was just gonna say given the big shakeup in the crucible recently Precision auto rifles and specifically auto rifles with target lock have been getting some significant looks. And this thing not only has target lock, but it has Zen moment, which is like the pairing IMO with target lock. I, you, some people will make an argument for dynamic sway reduction, and that's fine. But man, is Zen moment nice. And I don't know if I'm experiencing the benefit a little more playing on controller more, but it just feels really good. And I'm I'm definitely gonna be. I'm going to fully get to keep farming for this thing to get that Zen moment target lock roll to take that back into the crucible uh, at some point later on in the season. Yeah, this is the it gun right now. I think both for PBE and PVP, you got solid rolls both ways. So mm -hmm. good on you prosecutor. And it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks good. <laughs> like all of and these. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel bad making Saint break down the first weapon because I'm about to cover the weapon that he's been waiting to talk about. So <laughs> no, I'll, uh, I'll just do the stack comparison and then I'll give it back to you for, uh, the chonker <laughs> and, and, and what a glow up it's had not on the stat side. Unfortunately, we're talking about judgment. This is our, um, previously kinetic now stasis adaptive hand cannon firing in 140 RPM adaptive frames do not have any specific attributes or bonuses. Again, it's just a nice stat package. Um, and Judgment did have a nice stat package all the way back in year one. Right now, though, not doing so great, uh, especially mm. when we compare it to the other stasis adaptive hand cannon, Ias Luna, from Grasp of Avarice Dungeon. And also, if we try and compare it to Kept Confidence, a bit more recent 140 hand cannon uh, from Season of the Witch, that's Season 22. That one is Strand, but it's also craftable, which is why I included it here. Looking at Judgment stats, it has a range of 44. That is the lowest of these three uh, by six under Ias Luna. Has a stability of 42. That is lowest by 12 under Ias Luna. Handling of 42. Lowest by seven under Ias Luna. You picking up on a trend here? We've got reload speed of 40. Lowest by five under Ias Luna. And a recoil direction of 95, which is lowest by one under Ias Luna. Didn't age too well on the stat side, unfortunately. And Ias Luna, of course, is one of the better 140 hand cannons on the stat side. But... Thankfully, Judgment can come through on the perk side. And interestingly, it kept the sights, which I don't mm. think anyone was expecting based on Bungie's recent philosophy. Well, actually, it's not recent. Longstanding philosophy of converting sight weapons over to um, barrel weapons. But yes, we do have our sights here. So, uh, Saint, what are you looking at when it comes to sights and barrels on your favorite hand cannon? Yeah, you just heard a, a bunch of really bad numbers, okay? You don't worry about that, <laughs> all right? We're, we're, we're going to fix that in, in just a second here, so don't worry about all those bad numbers that you just heard. It's going to be okay. That's um, all propaganda, all right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> we 
we actually have some really solid stat bumps that you can pull in from these sites. So starting off with fast draw is plus 15 handling, five stability, five aim assist. You got steady hand for 10 handling, 10 stability, five aim assist, and then true sight for three range handling and stability, and then five aim assist. Um, you also have hit mark for five range, and, and that's pretty much it in a little aim assist. Uh, crossfire starts getting into some stat malices, which I'm not particularly interested in. Um, honestly, I would say if you can land a true sight, steady hand, or fast draw, you're probably doing pretty good. Hit mark is fine if you just want a little extra bump to the range stat there. Um, yeah, but there's also a few other things that can kind of help our stats. Uh, in the mags department, our our base mag is only going to be nine, which is not great. So I'm pretty keen on going for a attack mag to give me a little stability, an extra bullet in the mag, um, and yeah, five yeah five stability, ten reload, and that one extra bullet. So kind of nice, just spread there of of bonuses. Um, after that. I think that I would just be focusing on, okay, if I'm not going to get an extra bullet in the mag and a little extra reload speed, then I'm probably going like flared mag oil or alloy mag and just dumping my mag every time I'm, I'm just burning through shots on this weapon uh, would also be okay for just making up for your honestly pretty slow reload speed here, um, given that it is a hand cannon. So you take a, a decent sight, you know, you, you take a steady hand uh, or a true sight or something like that, and you, you get a decent mag here, giving you an extra bullet or two or some faster reload speed, and, and we can, you know, get a stat bar distribution that's starting to look okay. It, it's acceptable, right? And then where things really start to take off is when we get into our main stat columns. In the third column, we have demo Encore, Enlighten Action, Headstone, Moving Target, and Slide Shot. And then in our final column, we have Adrenaline Junkie, Eye of the Storm, Multi-Kill Clip, Opening Shot, Timed Payload, and Vorpal Weapon. Now, there's some really nice stat bonuses that can come from some of these third column traits, especially uh, Enlightened Action. If you're going to be investing elsewhere and you don't have a lot of reload speed, that could be a huge boon. But I feel like it's really hard to overlook that third column headstone, which is so rare to come by. Um, I think that we have a sidearm and maybe a pulse rifle, right? They can do third column headstone, but that's really rare. Um, what about you guys? Are you going in for the headstone to get that stasis uniqueness? Or are you more interested in trying to make up for some stats here or going for a little utility? Court, how about you? Well, I'm just looking at the weapons that do get headstone in the column three. Um, we have. Uh, it's just, I, think, I thought it was just a sidearm from Spire, but what pulse rifle were you thinking of, Saint? Uh, duality, or is that fourth column? That's fourth column. Yeah, the liminal vigil may be one of the only. Mm. I think it's the only the other one. Yeah, yeah, that's all I can see. D2 foundry is not. Like I'm, I'm trying to search specifically in tier one or sorry, uh, column three, but it's it's given me all the weapons that have headstone rather than, um, yeah. No, for me, I'm definitely going for that headstone. Uh, I'm a big, uh, strong believer of kind of subclass synergy with weapons, and this is kind of really up my street when it comes to headstone column three. What I would be pairing it with, hmm, um, I'm see. I would immediately say time payload, but because time payload starts that weird kind of, um, um, it's the weird thing with it splits the damage into, um, uh, like an an, imp an impact and explosive. So I'd need to actually like see how that performs with headstone, like in mm -hmm. practice, because on paper I'm thinking this is going to be a bit of a weird kind of situation where. I, Almost well, sunshot's a little bit different where you can land your positions pretty, pretty passively. Uh, but anything that's like it, it turns the projectile into or, or turns the bullet into a projectile that's kind of split into impact and explosive, it starts doing weird things with the precision um, hitbox. So I would need to double check that if if it's fine, then yeah, absolutely, it would go for time payload. Otherwise, hmm, probably adrenaline junkie because then I can really tie that into my stasis grenades. Now, I think the big reason headstone is kind of 
a lot of folks will be wondering why are we picking headstone headstone does inherit the uh damage buff of various uh damage uh kind of uh, from from a weapon now we don't have anything like frenzy we do have something here like Vorpal Weapon which is a 20% damage buff so the headstone will inherit that 20 da damage buff uh, when you uh, burst that crystal uh, the headstone crystal that spawns also so there's three sizes to stasis crystals you've got small which isn't applicable with the uh, headstone but you can get medium and large most of the time you'll keep be getting large ones medium you'll only get from the lower the like very low tier uh rank and file most of the time when it comes to higher tier like knights and elites elite combatants you'll get a large headstone crystal and then you can obviously loop, loop that into your various stasis builds yeah, I'm just looking at all the various uh, kind of fragments. Uh, I'm looking at like, um, well, chains is obviously a, a good one for just standing near a, a crystal. Uh, you've got, um, what is the, uh, so upon shattering a st stasis crystal, uh, it goes up to 11 seconds. I believe large crystals give you that uh, 11 seconds at base whereas medium only gives you six uh so there's like perfect synergy with the various subclass uh, uh with uh with stasis for column four i'm not i'm not too sure i would need to double check if time payload is actually uh, like uh applicable for for uh headstone um impetus what are you kind of uh vibing with um are you a headstone believer here yeah, I mean, you're you're absolutely on the money here. Like, I think best case scenario, headstone time payload, you spawn the crystal and then that 0.6 delay of time payload immediately shatters mm. the crystal. Is mm. I don't know if that's... If you kill an enemy with time payload, does that second explosion not proc at all? Like, if you kill it with the bullet? I... Well, okay, so it's really funny, Court, that you immediately mentioned that off the bat because I think it was... It was somebody in the the PVE chat when I was talking about how stoked I am about this trait combo, they had a similar, you know, retort of, well, it doesn't have anti synergy. And then my mm. mind went to, well, think about fate bringer using fate bringer with time payload and, or explosive payload and firefly hardly ever feels like it interferes. And, and I know that that was a change that they had made, um, at some point before this came back, like before fate bringer ever came back. But time payload is like a slightly different beast, right? Because it has a, it's it's like a slightly even further shift in damage percentage share between the two uh, pieces of the projectile, and it also does have the delay. So I'm, I honestly need to get, I, I need to get this roll. I need to farm, honestly, for science. For science, I need to farm <laughs> this guy more, um, because everything that I've gotten so far is moving target, and that's yeah. great for the crucible. You know, moving target, opening shot, moving target, eye of the storm. That's really nice for hitting, you know, your your three crits in a row. But yeah, I'm really curious to try it out with headstone and see if there is any interference there or. Does it have even greater synergy like Impetus is talking about where you have the potential of hitting a target and then because it's primary weapon damage, if you're using um, Rending, I believe that's going to allow your primary weapons to deal more damage to crystals. Um, yeah, it could shatter uh, yeah, like, yeah, pretty much yeah, instantly. Yeah, it's Rending. And then yeah, if you, you can immediately have, like, shatter a headstone crystal, I mean, that's incredibly powerful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so strong. It's That's like, like a, a stasis themed dragonfly or like chain ice, reaction, basically. I see fly. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that, so again, like there's just so many like question marks with time load payload because we've not had time payload for some time. Oh, so or at least rare. Like, yeah. like I was looking on them and just wondering what, what weapons do I have that has time payload? And it's, it's just all things that I've maybe kept from years ago <laughs> uh the most recent was the cantata of which is from witch queen i say most recent that was two years ago at this point but uh uh that that's got time payload but beyond that before that was annual skate which was they put it on like, uh combined action ah, not that okay. anybody's using but that came combined out this, action but that came out Who? this season <laughs> yeah yeah i did just bring that up i i if there's a weapon that can't have time payload on it it's on it in my vault somewhere that's for sure because i love <laughs> this trait um so so the 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 
it, it's not fair to say t uh, time payload or explosive payload have quote a damage buff but technically from mm -hmm. how it like splits damage there is some element of a damage buff it's just not traditional uh say like rampage or, or frenzy it's not that type of dam uh, pay, uh, uh, damage increases it's just how the the machinations of a bullet turning into a projectile it impacts and then explodes for for the case of time payload or explosive payload where it's it's a split down the middle kind of mm -hmm. 45 to 55 to explosive and uh impact i actually you, you brought that up with ex ex explosive payload that's maybe where i might be getting confused what, with because i know it was mm. like in destiny one and maybe partially destiny two those type of perks were a bit kind of weird when it came to precision shots mm -hmm. but because we've not had time payload for so long or at least for for a weapon that's for, for to proc a, a perk like headstone we haven't had anything like that so yeah we definitely have a look at uh, getting getting some farming on for judgment to, <laughs> to get that headstone time payload uh, but yeah headstone should inherit quote the damage buff of time payload but for other things like multi-kill clip uh, adrenaline junkie and vorpal weapon uh, the, the stasis crystal spawned by headstone will inherit those damage buffs yeah, yeah I would say if the time payload interaction isn't exactly how I imagine it, and that would, again, be a very incredible scenario, best case scenario, then I think my other picks would be Headstone, Adrenaline Junkie, or Headstone Forpal Weapon. Because yeah. while I've been accused of spreading fake news in regards to the stats, <laughs> I will remind you that Ayas Luna also has these same stat sites and can also get those same stat buffs and still retain its stat advantage over Judgment. So I don't think specking into stats will really make it feel as good as Ayas Luna. That's not the point. I think you just need to go into that double damage perk combo because yeah. Ayas Luna does not have the double damage perk combo. It does not have the flexibility of options that having Headstone in Column 3 enables uh, Judgment. And it doesn't have an Origin trait, so... Yeah, Adrenaline Junkie is definitely pretty attractive. If it... I, I think the only way I would go for that is if it has just straight up anti-synergy. When it's like mm -hmm. actively making it worse, kind of like we were talking about explosive payload would for Freightbinger. Um... You guys were right with where Headstone lands, so Liminal Vigil, uh, Fire and Forget, which is three bursts uh, oh, right. linear for you, <laughs> Elephant, oh, yeah. and then Judgment. That's the only three weapons that have Headstone in the third column so far, anyway. Well, let me tell you, I fired and I forgot for sure on yeah. that one. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this in a, in a housekeeping either next week's episode or the week after that we'll, we'll update on when we all, all get right. the role yep yeah yep. yeah exactly <laughs> all right court what's our next weapon here so next up we have relentless which is our strand high impact pulse rifle 340 rpm previously a kinetic rifle uh, so it's still in the same slot, uh, slot but it's had its uh, damage went from kinetic to strand. With this being a high impact, while you're aiming down sight uh, and either moving at or below 2.8 meters per second, you get a negative 20% accuracy cone size and a negative 17% accuracy cone growth. So basically, it's going to be a little bit more uh, uh, just intrinsically uh, kind of... Uh, it's going to hit land the shots um, when you're moving very slowly or if you're just standing still. Uh, so we're going to pair this with the uh, Psy Hermetic 5, which is actually one of my preferred um, uh, drops for PvP and the Messenger. Uh, so Psy Hermetic is our stasis world drop and the Messenger is our kinetic trials weapon. So range of 55, lowest by 11 under Messenger. Stability of 49, which is kind of middling. Messenger has fif uh, 54. Handling of 24, which makes it uh, the lowest by 7 under Messenger. Reload of 36, which is middling. Uh, just slightly below Messenger has 38. And recoil direction of 65, again, is middling. Uh, Cyhermetic 5 has 75. So... Again, it's another one that's kind of, uh, you know, it's still got the Destiny, uh, uh, sorry, the year one kind of stats here, a little bit kind of down and out. I'll ask the question again, Saint, did you fire this earlier on and how was it feeling? The Relentless is incredibly stable, even in its mm -hmm. just most basic state. 
Um, another situation where 65 recoil direction sounds like really low. And I found that messing, I was like, I didn't even want to mess with it at all because as soon as you started to see that shift, uh, to the left, or to the right, it may kind of interfere there. So maybe if you get like an arrowhead break, that might be good and just take it all the way to 95. But generally speaking, I, I don't think that you need to worry about the recoil direction on this at all. It's shocking how stable this thing is. Yeah, you and I were firing this at the same time because I think we both got relentlesses yep. to drop when we were farming that first encounter. And I forgot about the high impact part of that as well, but I was just shooting it standing still. And I was like, okay, I feel like I can land shots pretty well. And then I started moving and the high impact frame stuff started kicking in with that cone size stuff. And I was like, oh, these bullets are like going in a line, like right, right on top of each other. This feels incredible. And I had the base recoil direction, so... Yeah, again, <laughs> deterministic recoil really really does mess with you, but this gun feels good. Yeah. So maybe I need to try to just be moving as fast as possible while shooting it, and maybe that high impact would fall off and it would, you hmm. know, it would feel a little bit uh less stable, but yeah, really feels solid. And again, that was on controllers. So for yeah, mouse and yeah. keyboard users, you know, it's something again, 65 looks a bit daunting, but for us, effectively, it might, might as well be 100. Um, so again, this is another weapon. It's a weapon I'm going to be chasing for PvP purposes uh, because I really want to put it up against Cy Hermetic. I've been really rocking Cy for a lot of my kind of pulse rifle needs. It's such a solid weapon. Uh, over there, I have moving, I've got the role of moving target and head seeker which is kind of what you want for something like uh Psy hermetic and pvp uh not something that i was chasing for P pve purposes uh, kind of same ball kind of in the park here though it does have your strand um uh synergies here but i'm getting a little bit of a head of myself here so yeah another weapon I'll, I'll be kind of focusing on kind of range stuff so you know you've got your cork, corkscrew rifling just for plus five stability range and handling across the board uh full bore if you want to take that minus 10 stability hit and minus five handling you do get that plus 15 hammer hor hammer forge rifling for that plus 10 range and again, small bore if you want a little bit uh, increased to stability and range with plus seven. Much like with uh, Prosecutor, I'm still going to go for something like armor piercing, high cow rounds, or ricochet rounds uh, for PvE. In PvP with Psy Hermetic, where has that went in my dim here? I did have it somewhere. So I have. Um, Acurized rounds, chambered compensator. Um, again, all for the the range kind of stuff here. Um, chambered does uh, it's plus ten stability and plus ten recoil direction on Psy, uh, and I do have uh, polygonal rifle rifling. Uh, but that <laughs> acurized round for that plus ten range to really max things out. Moving target, head seeker uh, is kind of the same ballpark that I want for a PvP role. In terms of PvE, we do have very kind of uh, subtra uh, subclass focus perks. Um, we have Keep Away, we've got Outlaw, Rapid Hit, Slice, Snapshot, Slideways in the third column. And fourth column, we've got Desperado, Frenzy, Hatchling, Headseeker, Moving Target, and Zen Moment. So I can't get my uh, Moving Target, Headseeker role, unfortunately, with Relentless. Uh, but uh, in PvE, we've got Slice and Hatchling. That's your double strand synergy. Uh, if you want to go down that route, um, as a reminder, Slice is casting your class ability, allows this weapon to sever targets uh, on hit for a brief duration. And just as a reminder, what Sever does in PvE, it is a 40% uh, reduction to the enemy's outgoing damage if they're affected by Slice, uh, sorry, Sever. And in PvP, that's 15%. And that's 10 or 15 seconds if you have the extension fragment in PvE, or 5 uh, or 7.5 seconds in PvP. Uh, so yeah, that's your uh, kind of subclass synergy build there. Um, we do have Rapid Hit in Column 3. We've got Keep Away, some really great perks just kind of work behind the scenes. As long as you're hitting your crits with Rapid Hit, you've got stability up to, um, with no other perks selected here, you've got at least 74 and then reload speed of 96. Uh, Desperado is there if you like to uh, um, 
uh, get your uh, your firing delay uh, down by 30%, basically increases your rounds per minute up. Um, we do have Frenzy here with that 15% damage buff plus 100 to handling reload speed. But uh, for me, I think with just how this is quite a unique pairing, it's probably going to be Slice and Hatchling if I can get that. Uh, but for PvP, it's going to be quite different uh, situation. I do want to get that Head Seeker. Maybe Slice, maybe Rapid Hit. Um, Saint, what are you kind of uh, vibing here for Relentless? Is this something that you're going to be chasing for, whether it's in PvP or PvE? Yeah, I I definitely see Slice as a super valuable trait. I mean... It's just, I mean, it's just really strong, and and it's strong in both sandboxes because of the of what it will do to a, the target that you're fighting against when you sever them. Um, in you know, in PVE, you're just generally making enemies less lethal, which is always great. So effectively, you're increasing your own DR, and then in PVP, you can you know if you're hitting slice on somebody or if you're applying uh, sever on somebody via slice, then you can essentially miss a crit and still win the gunfight without a question because they're just dealing less damage. Um, so really, really strong. And yeah, I'd probably be pairing that maybe slice frenzy um, for the stats and a little bit of damage or, or hashing. I, I'd take either one. Um, I don't know. Uh, probably keep away and something like keep away Zen moment or keep away head seeker for the crucible would be my go-to there. Yeah. I I feel like this took all the wind out of Belisarius. I know that those are two different archetypes, but especially for PvP, uh, in Belisarius, uh, mm -hmm. again, that's our, our comp weapon this season. That also had Slice Hatchling, but, um, you know, you got to play comp. You can't focus for it, so you're at the mercy of RNG there, but three comp matches versus farming the phalanx echo you know you, you i think we all know which one we're going for <laughs> unless you're a diehard pvp player listening to this podcast um yeah i mean this is absolute again i know they're different frames but th this is just stacked with such good options here um i have a keep away zen moment role mm. that i did take in a crucible felt great felt like a laser beam mm -hmm. um I didn't get some great maps, though, to, like, really test out the range, unfortunately. But still, I mean, yeah, this is just a solid high impact. Um, and I have not gotten a Psy Hermetic for PvP, so I have not gotten to enjoy the the strength of that gun, really. But, um, yeah, I've, I've gotten fortunate enough with this. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, I just... I think on the PvE side... Um, Definitely a slice frenzy. I don't. I mean, hatchling is is fine, um, especially now that the precision requirement has been uh, loosened. Um, like a slice hatchling would be fine, but I do really think like a slice frenzy would probably be the best role. Like Court mentioned, just um, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that would be great. But I, I have slapped this on my strand hunter PvP build, and I am loving this thing. So if I can get a, a slice roll, like a slice desperado, a slice head seeker. Uh, I'm going to be cooking, I'll be honest, boys. Pulse Rifles were my first PvP gun, so I've swapped over to hand cannons to try and get good at that, but this might bring me back. You know, I, I might be going back and, and picking up the old me. Psy Hermetics got quite a meme um, origin trait as well. So the, mm. the actual base weapon, if you can get that uh, accurized moving target head seeker, then you're, you are going to be tearing uh, things apart but the you know it, it's a bit of a meme the the wild card origin trait however with relentless you've just got something that's working something is giving you uh, the, the origin trait is giving you something whether it's uh, just passive increase to your range or handling or if you're down below that 50 percent, you're getting that slight damage increase sure it's one two or three percent or and any number between those values but it's something it could really just hit, hit over the edge in those engagements in pvp um but uh, yeah i i the only viable role that i got for either sandbox um, I got a keep away and hatchling role. So, I mean, it's not, not like it's not bad or anything like that. I'd want to get some more roles of Relentless, um, specifically for PvP, but uh, again, we've got some farming to do, lads. <laughs> we do indeed. We do indeed. Mm -hmm. I'll take our second pulse rifle here. Yes, there is a second pulse rifle dropping from the same dungeon here. This is Darkest Before. 
Uh, and this was around uh, in the original, well, I can't say the original because it wasn't around for the original, for the second iteration of the Prophecy Loop Pool. This was an ARC Rapid Fire Pulse Rifle. It has now been upgraded to a Solar Rapid Fire Pulse Rifle, firing in three bursts at 540 RPM. Rapid Fire Frame, when the magazine is empty, you gain a 0.8 times reload duration multiplier, i.e. it reloads about 20% faster. We're going to be comparing this to two other Rapid Fire ARC Pulse Rifles, because yes, we do have two other ARC Rapid Fire Pulse Rifles. We actually have three, but I left out um, Horror's Least, so instead we'll be comparing it to Scalar Potential from this season, and then Oversoul Edict from Crota's End. And uh, actually, some surprising some uh, stack comparisons here. Range of 34 on Darkest Before, that is the highest by 6 over Scalar Potential. Stability of 48, highest by 1 over Oversoul Edict. Handling of 27, highest by 2 over Scalar Potential. Reload of 35, which is tied for the highest with Scalar Potential by 1 over Oversoul Edict. And then following up with a recoil direction of 64. So we are actually looking at a very competitive, year one, uh, statistically competitive, I should say, rapid fire pulse rifle. And um, recoil direction here, Saint, you're saying that's pretty harsh to the right from your testing? Yeah, it uh, it did not feel good to use. I'm going <laughs> to um, just come right out of all these other weapons. You know, hey, they're really nice. Um, they feel fine, but man, this was not it. It, it felt like it was just, it, it was just going straight to the right. Not even like it was going up very high. It was just going so hard to the right. Um, I was struggling to control it. Now I, I tried this with a, a base. I tried it with the chamber compensator and then I tried it with just a counterbalance. Um, so maybe if you if you really got this higher or uh, if you could get a recoil direction that would skew slightly to the left, then that may be better. And I, I honestly think that a recoil direction skewing slightly to the left would be optimal, even though that sounds really strange. And we used to always just, you know, either get a precision frame weapon or go for 100. Now it's kind of like, how can you work around that embedded recoil pattern, that that innate recoil pattern and yeah i definitely think try to get one that skews to the left a little bit or just go all the way to 100 and hope you got some high stability oof okay yeah well, <laughs> at least the other stats are competitive right uh this did get a perk refresh so we lost and added a few perks and calm three overflow quick draw slide shot and tunnel vision were removed and we have gained attrition orbs deconstruct elemental capacitor which actually was on column four heel clip and then also from column four originally a surplus in column four we lost elemental capacitor and surplus because those swapped over to the other row we've entirely lost full auto trigger system to no one's um you know good riddance and then Rampage and Unrelenting, we've gained in Column 4, Focused Fury, Headseeker, Kill Clip, and Incandescent. So looking at those two columns, I think if we are wanting to go for that Solar 3.0 synergy, you've got Heel Clip, Incandescent. If you want to go for the Clip Squared roll, you've got Heel Clip and Kill Clip. You do have one for all on here. Um, that's perfectly fine. Again, I mean, Heel Clip has been buffed so that you get cure times two uh, after you finish a reload uh, after about five seconds of, uh, within a kill. So that is sweet. It's 120 health, and then also nearby allies gain cure times one. So that, to me, is the most desirable column three perk. Um, attrition orbs, we're looking at 67% of the magazine size round down plus two hits will spawn an orb of power. Is that good on a rapid fire frame pulse rifle? Um, I mean, looking at a magazine of 36 bullets, I think that's kind of up to you to decide whether or not that's something that you want to chase. It is in Calm 3, so you can pair it with Incandescent or Kill Clip or One for All, you know, one of those PVE damage perks. I think that would be an interesting option. It's certainly a little bit more flexible than if it showed up in Column 4. Is that better than Heel Clip? Is that better than subsistence or wellspring in column three? Uh, you know, again, I think you decide. There's arguments to be made there. But for me, I'm prioritizing high heel clip for sure. And then incandescent uh, in column four. Barrels and mags, though, rapid fires, you know, it's, it's stability is their highest stat by a number point. 
range handling are kind of the next ones right there. So for me, I'm looking at small board just so I can keep taking advantage of that stability by also touching range, maybe hammer forged entirely. Um, you know, I'm, I'm okay with the low handling a little bit just because I'm putting out so many bullets at once here. And then in the magazines, I'm kind of just looking at the rounds perks, to be perfectly honest. Although light mag would be okay for touching my range and my reload speed a little bit. That's nice there. But I think armor piercing and high cal would be great options there as well. Alloy mags also here, you know, don't want to knock that. Faster reloads would be really helpful there. Um, again, we don't have something like Frenzy that just automatically maxes out your reload speed. So if you do feel like the reload's just a little too slow for you, I think that's also a perfect option there. Uh, flared Magwell gives you a plus 15 to reload speed. But again, I think that's a feel thing for you that you need to decide whether or not that's the best option there. I'm personally looking at the rounds perks, plus a heel clip, plus an incandescent, and then a barrel that focuses on range with handling as kind of a follow-up. Uh, Court, what are you looking at on this gun if you're interested in it? Definitely interested in it. This is one of my like all-time used and very favorite um pulse rifle back in the day i used to have or at least when it was uh kind of the the first refresh i had i think it was overflow it was either overflow or tunnel vision you know that was back when primary ammo was still like you had to pick up ammo to to reload into your your primary so don't have that anymore but uh it was the one for all and that was like one of the like back then one for all was fairly new and mm -hmm. it was just such an easy perk to to proc uh, in pve and just one of my favorite pulse rifles it looks great the sights uh just look great to to aim down sights for me I've, again a lot of a change it's went from arc to solar so it's completely um uh, like essentially just a, a, a new pulse rifle at this point a new element we do have heel clip and incandescent i was looking at all the weapons that actually pair with that and there's actually quite a lot adhortative is our recent pulse rifle though that was an adaptive uh, from the start of this season and then we've got stuff like Abyss Defiant. We have the Summoner, which we'll talk about in the future as well. Uh, that does have heel clip and incandescent. Uh, we have a few like sniper rifles. We've got Igneous Hammer. Again, that came out last season. And we've got Heliocentric, uh, which I know, Saint, you're still uh, chasing for, uh, for maybe that particular yeah, role. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Uh, and then before that, or at least uh, last year, we also had Jurassic Green, which is our other rapid fire frame, which also has heel clip and incandescent. So this is the weapon. If you did not get a heel clip incandescent roll in Jurassic Green, uh, you'll obviously have another, potentially another look at that unless they refresh the perks to not include that uh, later down this year in 2024. Uh, but this is the roll uh, you, you'd want to get if you didn't get that uh, and i think that's what i'm going to be chasing uh, nothing else is really screaming out for me if i get one for all again that's great it's just free damage 35 percent. very easy to do that on a pulse rifle in pve but uh that's the the dual synergy and just remember uh, heel clip did get a buff this uh the mid-season updates it went from times one cure to times two for the user only and then everyone else around you gets that times one cure and in pve uh that's 120 hp uh for that times two cure uh for yourself and then 60 for your allies nearby so very passive if you're kind of running a, a squad uh, in a gm uh you're going to be typically at kind of longer range uh engagements with your your teammates nearby and just having like a passive health uh sor source if you're just keep reloading uh very very easy very safe uh, play style so that's what i'm going for yeah, Probably it's the a, easiest uh, weapon to get a heel clip incandescent combo on when when you list out all the other options, right? The, you got the, trials, a world yep. drop weapon, and a lost sector. <laughs> the most direct way, because uh, you know you've got some. I, I missed out like Twilight Oath and Luna Regolith, but you know they're they're snipers. Mm. Uh, but you know, a best to find is maybe well adhortative because it's craftable. You can craft adhortative. That's um, true. But you need to get the rolls for it, and it's also an adaptive frame. So I'm not that keen on adaptive frames in the first place, and also the 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 the, the kind of leafs and 
like just the dirty look of ad hortatives just kind of puts me off when there's just bits of foliage all over the the, the gun it's I'm just not a big fan of that so this is the cleanest weapon and yeah to impetus, impetus's point we've got uh probably so far anyway it's the 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 most direct way to get uh, heel clip and incandescent uh and remember it does drop at the final boss along with the um uh, what's the other weapon here we listed it earlier on uh it was judgment so mm-hmm. uh saint will be uh, at the kel echo for for many <laughs> uh many sessions trying to get both of these yeah specifically judgment <laughs> i i was gonna say it's it's a good thing this thing's got some pretty pretty solid traits with a pretty small purple because you know yeah. heel clip kill clip heel clip incandescent uh are both really nice and i do kind of want to give those a, a try you know even if the initial impression of the recoil was not a great one we'll give it a chance saint's about to get every single possible rule of darkness before <laughs> wow of course and i get all the god roll judgments <laughs> at least somebody can test something all right that's right yep for science, for science. you know <laughs> all right i believe that brings us to our final weapon a sudden death this is a arc aggressive frame shotgun. Uh, you get a 0.75 fire recovery delay for four seconds after you get a kill, aka you get 25% increase um, you know, in between your shots. Compared with Found Verdict, which is the you know, vault of glass and Imperial Decree kinetic aggressive shotguns, um it's not a great look to be to be up front with you let's let's take some look at some specific stats and then what traits might be able to make up for those stats and keep this thing in the contention for some viability range is a base of 24 which is the lowest by seven under found verdict stability is 26 which is in the middle uh, imperial decree has 29 handling is at 24 lowest by 14 under found verdict the reload is 32 which is the lowest by forward found verdict and the recoil direction uh, is 74 which is also the lowest um not really looking good on the initial stat section here but yeah let's let's take a look at at what we've added and lost or what we've gotten and lost we lost in column three field prep grave robber pulse monitor and surplus and then we gained in column three elemental capacitor, discord, envious assassin, and um, repulsor brace. Yeah, as as the new void version of the shotgun that was arc. I should clarify. Um, and then in column four, we lost wellspring, frenzy, snapshot, elemental capacitor, surrounded, and then gained bitteral constrictor, cascade point, destabilizing rounds, opening shot, and trench barrel. So a pretty interesting mix here. Uh, it's a whole new gun. <laughs> yeah, of of traits and stuff like that. And yeah, when you when you hear those stats of you know compared to found verdict, which is kind of dominated aggressive shotguns and and been a dominant shotgun in the crucible since its release, at least to some extent. Um, it's got higher range. It's got better reload. You know, it's got better handling by a massive amount, but um, you know, as we kind of look through the barrel and mags here, I would say, you know, it's pretty easy, you know, I'm, I'm not huge on full choke on aggressives these days. It's something we were talking about just before the show. So I'm probably going to be going for something, uh, like, yeah, I would say barrel shroud, you know, course crew, just extra range, extra handling are going to be nice. Um, and then accurized rounds in the second slot, uh, Assault mag is incredibly useful too, especially in PVE. You're just getting that extra rate of fire just outright, which is really nice. Um, and then the third column, we have you know a really uh, you know you've got repulsor brace here, right, and Ivius assassin as well as slide shot, which are kind of mixed. And then you know discord threat detector elemental capacitor, uh, which definitely seem very crucible focused. And then in the final slot of barrel constrictor cascade point destabilizing one, two and trench barrel. Now trench barrel, um, gonna buff 
a bit of a rework where the ranged melee, right, can now trigger Trench Barrel, which is pretty nice, um, especially on something like Legend of Acrius, but also applies here. And then Cascade Point, which is also kind of interesting for dumping some ammo out. But I, you know, I think when I look at aggressive frame shotguns in PvE, the only place I really see them used very much is in maybe some damage swapping or sorry, excuse me, for um, like some one-two punch activation and stuff like that. But there are a lot of other weapons that have better ammo economy for one-two punch builds like Swordbreaker and Iclos uh, Shotgun version 3. So it's tough to compete with them there. Um, but the destabilizing rounds and repulsor brace is kind of fun. Um, and then threat detectors, one that I really wanted to focus on as kind of the one thing that can allow it to compete with found verdict in terms of, of handling and things like that is threat detector because of the scaling uh that it gives to your handling animation durations which is pretty huge a 0.9 and 0.81 animation duration multiplier depending on one or two stacks there which is yeah that and then um elemental capacitor on uh arc is going to provide 50 handling which is pretty huge so there are some ways you can get around that if you're looking to use this in the crucible and up that handling with something like opening shot. But yeah, tough, um, tough uphill battle there. Uh, court impetus, you know, where are you guys at? Is there is there anything jumping out to you from this thing? Or are you ever using cascade point on a on a shotgun these days? <laughs> uh, no, uh, but I was looking at Invest Assassin and just the other weapons that roll it, at least in column three and column four, we do have a few other, I think two other weapons like Compass Rose that gets uh, Invest Assassin. But in column three, we've got Nessus Ablation, including it's a depth variant. Uh, we've got a Sudden Death and then Basso Ostinato. So uh, not a lot of selection, but like, like Envious Assassin plus Trench Barrel was the kind of vibe that I was going for. Have mm -hmm. all your uh, your your um, reserves basically in your magazine if you can get that procked up fairly easy with Envious Assassin, and then Trench Barrel just keep doing that loop of firing three shots, then melee, then firing again. If you're if you're using it for more of a kind of uh, a, a semi DPS route. Um, other weapon yeah threat detector is a really passive one if you want to go for that um i i mean i was talking quite highly about kind of double or singular elemental perks and we do have that on this we've got repulsive brace in column three and then destabilizing rounds in column four not that keen to do that on a on a special weapon at least on a shotgun i think that's more kind of a for a trace rifle or for just other primaries i think that would be a lot more uh kind of appealing to me but for a shotgun i think it's you might as well just go down the route uh, and especially with uh something like um assault mag and then the intrinsic bonus that aggressive shotguns get with upon scoring a kill you can then uh, really speed up that fire recovery delay for a few uh seconds as well so you can get some really good burst damage you can if you can build down that route but uh, i think out of all the weapons we've been talking about this is the one in pve I should add, in PvP, it's a completely different story that I'm maybe not really focusing on. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my my view for uh, a sudden death. Uh, Impetus, what are you vibing? You you a little bit more friendly than I? Not by a lot. Uh, I'm kind of looking at like Discord and Trench Barrel. Um, mm, okay. You know, for like infinite ammo glitch for seven and a half seconds. You know, you know get a kill <laughs> with another weapon, swap to this bad boy. Um punch some enemy and then just start doing damage getting kills moving on to the next target kind of a thing not losing any ammo again for that that specific uh seven second range but yeah i mean i've been looking at a few pvp content creators because again this thing has pretty much every pvp perk you could ever want on mm -hmm. a shotgun um it has them all you know you've got discord which in pvp is now probably the best special weapon perk in the game uh outside of consistency stuff like opening shot but you got l cap threat discord um slide shot and then you can pair all of that with opening shot and this is still apparently to to people that play with shotguns in pvp far more than i do very inconsistent even with all that stuff so i don't know man um i'm not seeing the connection in, in pve personally again Repulsor Brace and Destabilizing Rounds. I looked at it on Nessa's back when I had that first crafted all the way back at the start of the year. Didn't really thrill me. 
I don't think that's going to change on an aggressive frame shotgun. Um, you know, maybe repulsor brace trench barrel, but again, the close range stuff, while a void overshield would be nice, I still need to keep thinking about debuffing targets with some void debuff to keep that whole thing going. And I'd rather just have like an envious trench thing, but I am not actively seeking that out. And I don't even think on an aggressive frame, that's going to be really worth it compared to something that can fire a little bit faster, like a rapid fire frame shotgun. So, you know, if it's kind of one of those situations where if the rule drops, I'll try it out, but I'm not, I don't think until then I'm going to be recommending it to anyone. Cause I don't even know if I'll recommend it to myself, <laughs> even if I get the rule. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's definitely an interesting one. I'll be giving it a try, but it's it's a really it's a strong battle to fight when it comes to succeeding in PvP as a shotgun these days. You really got to bring them onto the table, which you know those things did. So we'll we'll, we'll kind of see how that plays out over time in that meta. Yeah, I did get a threat detector opening shot roll, um, and I'll try it. But uh, you know, it's. It's in the same slot as my Igneous. It's in the same slot as some other great pulse rifles that I really want to try and auto rifles. And, you know, it's in the same slot as Prosecutor. So if I ever get that Zen moment target lock roll, I mean, I'm just going to go swap to Prosecutor. No, no point in testing out that threat detector opening shot <laughs> sudden death at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's you're right. It is a tough time to be a shotgun in PvP right now. Okay, well, I think that about does it for Prophecy Weapons. Yes, primary weapons the dungeon. Uh, we got some bangers. <laughs> We've got some some juicers, in and they're all spread out too. I mean, you've got a you've got something solid to chase in all three encounters, which that is mm -hmm. not the case for many dungeons. Um, and uh, yeah, the stat package may not be great, but the perk package is is competitive. We've got some really interesting stuff on these guns. So, GGs to the weapons team at Bungie mm -hmm. for updating some very beautiful looking guns uh bringing them up to the the 2024 uh bar for excellence i should say but i think unless you guys have anything else you want to say that would wrap it up for episode 97 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, for me i think uh just on your point there about kind of it spread out nicely uh, for across all weapons and i think you know there was some kind of question marks about oh there's two pulse rifles in here different frames but i think they've done a really good job at kind of uh deviating between each like they're very uh it's a high different differentiation between relentless and darkest before right i think relentless is more for pvp anyway but it's got some pve uh kind of potential and then darkest before with your kind of the, at least at this point it's the easiest way to get uh, ch uh ch chill clip heel clip and uh, incandescent so like just because they're two pulse rifles they're very very different when it comes to play style yep yep and remember this is a free-to-play dungeon so if you've yep. got any new light players absolutely go get them in here there's some great stuff to chase for pve and pvp um it's also such a chill dungeon i mean you know we it's were very about fun yeah living mm -hmm. in the queue but like <laughs> that is the perfect farming encounter you can really just turn your brain off shoot the shit with some guys um you know, not get your adjudicator with Onslaught, have a great time, <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> um, and all three encounters are pretty much easy to farm. Like the first yes. one, the the phalanx basically falls over when you look at them. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the cube encounter, you know, maybe it's probably the longest out of the three, but it's it, you don't have anything to really, you know, it's very passive. You can just chill out and shoot the shit. And then with Kel Echo, um, you've got you know it's one of the best boss fights but it's fairly easy nowadays it's not you're you're going to effectively you, you you can one uh platform the boss with uh i think sleeper simulants actually doing some really good good work if you can really stack up on debuffs and buffs like well of radiance and stuff uh, but you should be able to get them after a couple of platforms if you're stacked up uh, and again it's another kind of easy passive um farm absolutely absolutely well thank you so much for listening again we are going to be here for the next month we got some we got some stuff to talk about we got some weapons to break down some gms to cover so we will be uh we'll be here for you guys in the in the rest of the month also of course want to thank our audio engineer autodidactos for his work behind the scenes um welcome back buddy we got a lovely two-hour episode for you so chop <laughs> chop <laughs> 
Uh, until next week, my name is Impetus. You can find me by that name in Discord and in Destiny. Feel free to tag me in all of your Onslaught adjudicator drops. <laughs> That's only just going to make me more impassioned to get back in there and farm the cube. Saint, where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me in the cube, honestly. It's, uh, it's pretty real farming for the, for the adjudicator and probably going to be killing that boss plenty of times or as many times as I possibly can before that reset hits on Tuesday. It's a good thing I am on spring break from class this week. <laughs> you can also find me on Twitter and hang out in the Massive Breakdowns Discord like Impetus mentioned. Court, where can our listeners find you? Same here. You can find me over on that Discord server as Court Projects and over on my various socials as Court Projects as well. Uh, you can find me... Uh, in the cube with these guys farming <laughs> for some rolls and uh, you can also find me trying to get a darkest before with uh, heel clip and incandescent you can also tag me with those rolls um you can also find my spreadsheets and infographics over on the destiny spreadsheets link tree along with some amazing content creators and scientists with their various spreadsheets and documentation to enhance your destiny experience all right, that's it for another episode. We'll see you in the next one.